Hey guys, Bigsy here and welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm going to talk about rare and collectible PS4 games. This is episode number 11 and let's get right into it. Uh, so the first game comes from a suggestion from a good friend of ours, Rasmus, and that is Dex, DX. Uh, this is a 2D RPG uh, platform style game. It looks really cool. Uh, it's meant to be really good. And it is quite hard to find. Um, I've known about this game for years and it, I had to actually go out to eBay to buy this one. Um, I haven't seen a copy in the wild for a long time. I used to see it, but I haven't seen one for a, for a very long time. And I'd definitely be grabbing this one sooner rather than later. And that's Dex. And this next game, a lot of you guys have reached out and... Um, so this one to me, and it's been on my radar since it came out. It's only come out recently, and that is Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater. Um, if you're from North America, you'd be familiar with the Fatal Frame series. How collectors might be more familiar with Project Zero. Uh, this actually got a Wii U release, but this PS4 release is from Asia, and it is in English. Uh, so I'd definitely be tracking this one down sooner rather than later, guys. The Project Zero slash Fatal Frame games are quite expensive. Um, I expect this one, a horror game, I expect it to only increase in value. Uh, from when it first came out, it's actually quite difficult to find. I ended up getting a copy through PlayAsia. I do believe they still have copies. That is Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater. Moving on to a game I've been after for a couple of years. I actually found one in the wild. I did pay up for this one. I paid $58 for it. And that is Fairy Tale. And I've never seen a copy cheaper. Apart from one time where EB Games had like a clearance on free own copies for some weird reason. Um, but Fairy Tale, same as the anime. The anime is quite popular and even the DVDs go for a bit of money. And they was a video game. Um, to JRPG, it's a very obscure release one. Um, I've only ever seen this twice in the wild. One of them being the copy I purchased. Um, yeah, so if you guys come across Fairy Tale, definitely pick it up. Um, I only expect it to get harder and harder to find down the line. Now here's one that um, one of you guys suggested to me recently. It mightn't be too rare in your part of the world, but the Australian Power version without the stickers is actually really hard to find, and that's Hello Neighbor. Um, this is actually a really cool game. It's sort of like a spooky um, horror type game. Uh, it's based off another series on PC, I forget the name of it. Um, but there is a follow up to this one as well, which is quite hard to find. Um, yeah, especially for Australian collectors, keep your eyes out for the OzPow sticker. Most copies in store are the American version. Now here's one that I've been after for a long time and I'm very surprised at how hard this was to find. And that's the Metal Gear Solid 5, the definitive experience. This includes the Phantom Pain and Ground Zero in one pack. Um, I love the Phantom Pain. I've never actually played Ground Zero, uh, but I have been looking for this pack for a couple of years. I'm a complete Metal Gear collector and I needed it for my collection. And I have not been able to find this for under $40 ever. And finally EB Games had like a half price sale on it at $38, so I got it for $19. <clears throat> but yeah guys, this is one that's eluded me for a long time uh maybe it's different in your part of the world but i do not see many copies online and that again is the metal gear solid 5 the definitive experience here's one that actually slipped under my radar if i didn't come across it in the wild i probably would have missed it and that's the mega dementia neptunia viir um, i had the vii version but this is the VR version, which I was actually missing. Um, considering it's VR compatible, I expect this one to be very collectible in the future, guys. It's already commanding prices of like $70 plus, and I only expect it to continue rising, being an ID factory game. Uh, it's got all the elements of an expensive game with that 
VR thing thrown in. There's crazy VR collectors out there right now. Um, yeah, and that one again is Mega Dementia Neptunia uh, 7R. Here's one I've been after for a while. I've played this on Game Pass. It's really fun. This is the follow-up to Mud Runner, and that is Snow Runner. Now, this is coming for like $60, guys, which is more than what it was released at, which is crazy. Um, it's just more Mud Runner, just driving in the snow, really fun, um, real truck simulating games. Uh, they're great games. I've had a heap of fun. They're fun co-op. They're fun by yourself. There's good missions in them. But yeah, guys, Snow Runner is very hard to find. There's actually like a complete version with DLC on it. I haven't been able to find that one. Uh, but you can, if you can find any of them under like $40, I'd definitely be grabbing them. Uh, this one hasn't dropped in price since it came out. Mud Runner's a little bit cheaper, uh, but Snow Runner's really surprised me at the value it's held. Here's one I probably should have spoke about a while ago. I've had this in my collection for years, and when I was going through tonight, I was surprised I hadn't talked about it yet. And that is Shadow of the Beast. Now, this only received a release in Asia. This is the Chinese-English version. Uh, this is sort of like a a beat em up with boss battles etc um i haven't heard too much about this game i can't say if it's good or not but this is in the Eng this is in english uh the price is creeping up a little bit uh, so if you want to get the english version i would be trying to find it sooner rather than later and that is shadow of the beast a couple more games that you guys have suggested uh the games that i love there are three releases of this, but I'm just going to be talking about two. And that is Tropico 5, the complete collection. <laughs> and Tropico 6. Excuse me. Now, there is a standard Tropico 5, but that is really common. Uh, one of you guys mentioned the complete collection a while ago. Um, dude, guys, just check out the size of that manual. Like, that's awesome. That's what manuals are meant to be like. This manual weighs a ton. Um, but yeah, this has got all the DLC on it, so if you're picking up Tropico 5, this is definitely the version you want to get. The regular version's like $15, and this one's like $30 to $40. Uh, but if you can find it for like that $20 mark, I'd definitely be grabbing it. And then Tropico 6 is still holding like the $30 to $40 value mark. Uh, Tropico's a great game, guys. I do play it on PC, but I started um, playing this on console. Eh, Presidente! You control an island in the Caribbean. Uh, sort of around the time of like the Cold War and stuff. Uh, it's heaps of fun. Um, but yeah, Tropico 5, the complete edition, and Tropico 6. I'd definitely be picking up if you can find them for good prices. They're definitely not rare games, but I believe they're quite collectible and they might even become more expensive down the line. Now here's a thriller mystery title that's sort of... um going under the radar and that is those who remain this is the deluxe edition um, now if you're picking this one up just keep in mind that it does come with a couple of postcards um, which i do believe are part of the game there's another game coming up which definitely has postcards as a part of the game you'll see that one in a second so make sure it's got the postcards um, but yeah copies of this are going for like 40 to 50 dollars which really surprised me i remember getting it for like nine dollars back in the day but i haven't seen this in shops for a couple of years um that is those who remain uh here's another series that um i've used to see a fair bit but copies have definitely dried up in fact i'm still after an australian version and that is to decom the wami and to decom 2. um these are JRPG, sort of like, I would have originally said Monster Hunter, but looking at the artwork and stuff, it looks more cartoony than Monster Hunter. Uh, but yeah, they're Japanese-inspired anime games. Uh, I'm assuming they're based off an anime. I'm not 100% sure. I don't really watch anime. I just play JRPGs. Um, but yeah, de de especially um, to Kim and to Kiwani, this one's especially the Australian version, uh, it is getting quite expensive. This one here you can still find under $30. Um, but I expect both of these games to be quite collectible in the future. 
Now I mentioned the game previously that had um, uh, blah, 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 postcards. Here's another one that has postcards and that is In Town of Light. And in fact, these postcards are actually real locations in real life and they're actually used in the game. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's like a detective style thing where you have to like use the images and work stuff out. Uh, so if you're buying this, make sure it does come complete with the postcards or the photos. Now this used to be like $20. This is now going for like 40 to 50. American copies are even going higher, which is crazy. Um, but it is a horror title, guys. Horror titles, like JRPGs, they seem to be the first genre that just skyrockets in price. The Town of Light. I'd definitely be picking this one up sooner rather than later. And like I said before, it is inspired by true events and real places. <laughs> Here's one that I'm surprised that I haven't spoke about. I'm sure I did, but it wasn't on my list. I have spoken about this earlier, let me know. But um, I do run a list of every game that we talk about and it wasn't on that. And that is Trials of Mana. Square Enix title, a remake of the original. Definitely one you want to be picking up. It's already going for like $60 to $80 pre-owned. Um, that's if you can find it, guys. Um, I had to wait a while to actually find one just on eBay. I ended up getting lucky and I got one for $40. And the seller was in my town. Um, but yeah, Trails of Mana. Um, like Secret of Mana. These games were critically acclaimed back in the day and there is... Quite a fan base that will be looking for these ones. They also got very limited releases, so I expect them not just to hold their value but to increase in the future and to be harder to find. Definitely games you want to be adding to your collection now rather than five or ten years down the line. Now here's one that I've been after this for a couple of years. I remember losing an auction and it went for like $80 and that's just insane. And the Australian version is very expensive. Overseas, uh, copies still go for forty to fifty dollars, and that is the Walking Dead, the Telltale Definitive series. This includes all four seasons, and this version in particular is very hard to find, guys. I've only ever seen it in the wild once, and that's the copy I picked up. I looked at it on the shelf, and I just couldn't believe what I seen. Uh, I was so excited to pick it up. After losing that auction, um, I was, I was just like, wow! Like, I never thought I would have um, ever come across this game again. I don't believe I have. There is a copy online right now that is the Australian version, and overseas copies are very expensive. So wherever you are, if you can see this one for a good price, definitely pick it up. And that's The Walking Dead, the Telltale Definitive series. And here's one that definitely got a lot of releases, guys. Certainly not rare, but it is one that has held its value. It's still holding that $30 to $40 mark. And I believe every PS4 collector wants this one in their collection. And that's the Wipeout Omega Collection. Wipeout is just a phenomenal PlayStation series from the PS1 to today. Um, and with this Wipeout Omega Collection, you've got it all. Um, I definitely recommend picking this one up sooner rather than later. Um, there was a point where you can get this for like 20 bucks, but I checked online and you're looking at like 35 to $40 at cheapest. Um, so I expect this one only to get more expensive into the future. That's the Wipeout Omega Collection. Uh, another series that was on PS3 that I initially overlooked and of course, the PS4 version just got so hard to find, and that's The Witch and the Hundred Knight. This is the Revival Edition. Another NIS America title. There was a sequel, which hopefully I can talk about one day, but I haven't found that one yet. If you find that one, definitely grab it. I, I personally would pick that one up like $70 and under, uh, so take that with a grain of salt. This one, if you found it for $50, I'd be grabbing it, guys. That's The Witch and the Hundred Knight. This PS4 version is more expensive than the PS3 version now. Uh, so I'd definitely be looking to add this one to the collection sooner rather than later. A uh, question for you guys. If it releases on two systems, do you just get one? 
And then if so, do you get the new release? Does it not matter? Do you just get the cheapest one or whichever one you find first? Let me know. Here we have Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. Uh, this is actually a really fun game. I recommend this one. Um, I played it a while back and I really enjoyed it. I remember it being quite hard to find. I think I remember watching like a hidden gem video on it or something. And it took me quite a while to find it. I rarely ever see it in the wild. I see the Switch version occasionally, but the PS4 version I rarely ever see. Uh, so if you can find this one, guys, definitely be picking it up. And that's Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. Uh, not just that, I believe it's quite a hidden gem as well. Uh, maybe I'll even make a video on hidden gems one day. If you want to see that, let me know. Um, I've been put some footage together not to show you guys the cases. And one more title to talk about, um, and that is E's Origin. Um, now, I know Limited Run released this. Um, this is the Asian English version. Um, there were also possibly was a our release, uh, but I'm not entirely sure on that one. Um, but I can like visualize it in my head, so let me know in the comments if there was or not. Uh, but yeah, I believe all versions of this will be quite collectible. Um, this is plays in English. It's it's completely in English, so I don't see why this one won't be desirable. And that is E's Origin. Uh, all the Ease games are very hard to find. They're already quite expensive. And I see no reason why this won't continue the trend. There we, that's another episode in the books, guys. Uh, the PS4 is just such an amazing system. I've got heaps of games jotted down on the list. Mainly from you guys. So thanks so much to everyone for all the um, great suggestions. This series wouldn't have continued if it wasn't for you guys. We're almost at 2,500 subscribers, uh, so if you haven't subscribed yet and you see that number on the 2,500, give us a hand, hit the subscribe button, you'd be awesome. Um, if you don't enjoy the content, unsubscribe, I don't mind guys. Um, but yeah, if you do enjoy, want to support the channel, that's the easiest way to support me. Hit that like button, it's free. Um, yeah, I've been Figsy, you guys have been awesome, thanks for watching another video. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.